In a world with AI images and overly simplified corporate styles, I find it incredibly important to highlight true art that inspires. These three masters, Kenneth Rockefeller, James Stokey, and Howard Porter, all put pen to paper in a way that cannot be fully recreated by a computer, or even other artists. Their talent cannot be overstated, but I'm sure as hell going to try. Kenneth Rockefeller's creativity spills out of him as fiercely as graphic design pumps in his veins. His brother and father are both graphic designers, and Kenneth himself creates art as spiky and detailed as it is dynamic. He wears his love of early image, particularly Cyberforce, on his sleeve, eventually going to work on the series himself. His hatching is always an overdrive, and I recommend you take a few extra minutes to look closer at his more detailed pieces. If you go back far enough on his Instagram or check his YouTube, you can see how incredible he is at drawing at a minuscule scale, in these amazing fingernail-sized notebooks. Rockefeller draws beautifully in physical form, utilizing bright colored pens, pencils, and brushes. Mr. Rockford has worn many hats, working as a character designer, video game box artist, and storyboard artist, as well as many more. His art has the feeling of pre-production concept art, and his portfolio fits the bill. Perhaps this conceptual looking style is why his run on the Ultimates with Al Ewing works so well. The characters are literally working with abstract beings. His final issue exemplifies his out-of-the-box thinking style, depicting Thanos controlling and menacing the pages, as well as the panels, gutters, and our main characters. I could look at the art of the Ultimates for days, and I don't think another medium could create an experience quite like what's seen here. His style is great for everything, from energy effects, to Red Hood's gunshots, to sideways portals. Look at the bizarre shapes his panels take, as well as the tiny extra flourishes he adds outside them. It all comes together, turning each comic book page into a unified or gestalt piece, each panel fitting in like a puzzle. The perspective and framing really makes his art pop in works like Teen Titans, Superman, Velocity, and Cyberforce Hunter Killer. So many comics artists would never even think to put this kind of work into the gutters, but Rockefeller isn't just any artist. His excessive, finely detailed depictions push the limit of what technology, magic, and the comic medium can do. Truly, he breathes fresh air into every book he works on, with an infectious sense of wonder leaking from his brain to the page. Just look at these commissions. The man obviously loves the art, and the energy he puts into it radiates outwards into his many fans. For this reason, he was able to crowdfund his own comic, Groken, under his company, Mitographia. Rockefeller will no doubt be remembered as one of the artists who out-extremed even the 90s creators he admired. James Stokey is a self-taught Canadian artist whose hyper-packed style is, he thinks, borrowed from British one-page comics and creators like Jeff Darrow. Additionally, he's also taken Jamie Hewlett and Von Baudet as inspirations. I use the word taken lightly though, as James Stokey's style is a unique sight to behold. His work can be wacky, gloomy, or anywhere in between. And the same is true for his exuberant colors. Stokey tends to color his own works, now generally working with a color assistant. His earlier work like Orc Stain for Image Comics and Wonton Soup for Oni Press are a great look into his style, featuring all the crazy and phallic photos one could fathom. Sullivan's Sluggers is a kickstarted work of his I've recently been reading, and it's glorious, featuring trademark Stokey lettering and symbols in the speech bubbles. His line work is intense and meticulous. Stokey often dabbles in fantasy and tribal stories like Orphan and the Five Beasts, and does a damn good job at it, yet his work drawing industrial worlds and environments fits like a glove. Stokey often ends up drawing soldiers like an alien's dead orbit or Godzilla the half-century war. Leave it to Stokey's pieces to reground these classic franchises with refreshing new artwork. Thankfully, Stokey was able to achieve his dream of drawing a Godzilla series not once, but twice. In the first issue of Godzilla in Hell, Stokey's oddball style is put to incredible use, showing what an afterlife hellscape would look like to a living force of nature. Stokey's spectacular symbolic hellscapes are welcome, as Godzilla media these days seem to want the monster to be as far away from an analog for the atomic bomb as possible. While both of these stories are incredible companion pieces to the original material, Stokey was really able to muster his mighty militaristic A-game and Jason Aaron's 
Heroes Reborn number four, where Green Lantern analog Dr. Spectrum acts as the universe's space cop. The over-the-top dialogue, coloring, and constructs all combine to create a true spectacle. And in the 100th anniversary Avengers special, not really their 100th anniversary, but 100 years in the future, he melts fantasy, futuristic, and post-apocalyptic sensibilities in this great two-page spread. As you can tell, Stokey is great at depicting massive set pieces. His obsessive detail is great for rendering huge creatures such as the lazy Egyptian god Sobek in Stokey's title of the same name. He doesn't plan all these little details, quote, it just kinda happens. He can also get quite disgusting in books such as Edge of Venomverse and Alien's Dead Orbit. Stokey tends to be a bit reclusive, staying inside to draw all day in his home country of Canada, quote, otherwise he'll never get anything done, he says. As of this video, he has some great covers that range from King Conan, to Transformers, to Warhammer, to DC vs. Vampires, to Night Terrors. He attributes his success to friends like Brandon Graham, who quote, drew better than me and who I can just rip off of. It would be hard to argue, however, that Stokey is anything near a plagiarist. While Image, Dark Horse, and Oni Press pretty much let Stokey draw anything he wants, it's unfortunate his crazier ideas, such as this Spider-Man Vietnam piece, won't ever be fully realized. That's what's so beautiful about his pieces though. They're unfiltered, uncontainable insanity. Howard Porter has been working in comics since the mid-90s, first inking backgrounds and such for the likes of Dick Giordano, Frank McLaughlin, and Mike DiCarlo, who lived nearby. Eventually, one of the artists he worked for brought him to DC's offices in New York, where he left his portfolio on a few desks. The day before his wedding, he was contacted by Editorial, who asked him to do a fill-in issue for the Dark Stars. He ended up working on it every day on his honeymoon. And just so you know, he and his wife are still together to this day. However, his style has vastly changed since his early runs on works such as Grant Morrison's JLA. He's gone from these chunky 90s looking designs to a much more detailed and unique style. For example, here's a drawing he did of the Flash in Underworld Unleashed, versus a Flash he did in Joshua Williamson's 2016 run. It is notable that Porter was drawing two pages a day on Underworld Unleashed. Still, as you can see, his level of detail has slowly improved over time. His ability to do his own inks puts him ahead of a lot of artists, and he does a fantastic job at it. His process is doing tight pencils, scanning, darkening, and inking in Photoshop, then adding gray tones. He does sometimes ink physically, though. The detail he puts on characters' veins, blood, and muscles is highly stylized. A good example of this is the old and beat-up Bane he depicts in Bane One Bad Day. Porter has worked extensively on the Justice League, with distinctive designs on characters from the future Justice League in Justice League 3000, as well as seafaring versions of the Justice League in JL to round Earth. Porter really brought his character design skills to the max for this arc's seafaring fun. He also imagined the settings for Justice League 3000 and 3001, and even just flipping through those comics, you can see his half decade of experience in the 90s, mostly drawing backgrounds for others, has added up to visions of the future that are impressively intricate. He's worked on The Ray, Magog, Doc Savage, Deathstroke Inc., Masters of the Universe, The Flash, DC's Night Terrors, and Scooby Apocalypse. Porter has had anything but an easy run of it though. After his Justice League run with Grant Morrison, the immense pressure and a feeling of inadequacy led him to leave comics for a bit to work as a graphic designer, where he learned Photoshop. He did eventually return to comics, this time to Marvel, getting to draw his favorite franchise with Mark Wade in the pages of Fantastic Four. But around 2006, he accidentally cut his hand, severing a nerve and almost the entire tendon of his thumb, forcing him to take a job driving a school bus until late 2008. I would not wish such a fate upon anyone. Thankfully he picked himself up and returned by holding the pencil in a slightly different fashion, and has graced us by co-scripting and drawing some fantastic modern pieces. His panels in Flash Year One and Bane One Bad Day are impeccable, adding an extra layer of graphic oomph to his stories, truly melding the medium into the narrative. Porter is an inspiration on how to use panels effectively, every single one adding to the overall layout of the page a skill he's honed over the last three decades. Porter has drawn everything from a UFC poster to Gatorade bottle labels, so here's to the exciting work that lies ahead of him. 
By the way, thanks to Comics Coast to Coast for the podcast interview where a lot of this info came from. Everything that appears on a comic page doesn't just magically materialize. Every artist has to find their particular direction, improve on it, and all too often start over fresh to master something new. So support your favorite ever-improving creators, because their work is the only reason we have such a distinctive library of comics to pull from. And remember, the best comics art will not only challenge the artist, but it should challenge you as well. The only question left to ask is, how will you contribute?